present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. It happens to be Father's Day weekend 2015. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers, you Faja, Fajas. Um, you know, my grandmother used to say, anybody could be a father. That's easy, but you only have one mother. Mm -hmm. Which didn't, I knew where she was coming from, but it didn't make a lot of sense scientifically because only one spermatozoon meets with the one egg and 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 a the spermatozoon comes from one man not multiple men so the spermatozoon that meet that reaches the egg first uh, uh, creates conception which means that one, there is only one father. So one father, my, one mother. One father, one mother. Yeah. So my grandmother was wrong, but I knew what she was getting at. She was trying to say that mothers are more important. Mothers uh, care a lot more for their offspring, their children. Than As well, they should. Fathers do because they they because you're giving they're giving birth to them. You know, it's it's they're going through the experience of carrying them. Ugh, the whole plus, process. Plus, they're women. They have a the, the maternal the suppo supposedly the loving maternal instinct where they will defend their <laughs> child often to the death. But but not all not all mothers. Some mothers like the uh, the newer generation uh, females with the ghetto mentality will just toss their babies like they were disposable they're dumpsters per, dumpster babies like they were disposable uh, purchases toys or toys. whatever you know like stuffed animals oh how the, cute <clears throat> one woman the other day uh, a few days ago or something she uh, she killed her kid because it, it was uh, crying and keeping her up so she silenced it yeah not 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 with not with uh, a nurturing or attention, but with but death. She, yes. She silenced the baby poignantly. That's permanently in Brooklyn accent. Yeah. Yeah. She 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 permanently. Mm -hmm. then, uh, so this is the uh, sociopathic type of mentality that we have with the uh, what do you call them the millennia generation the millennia as they call them. Hey. It's human beings, and they all have problems. Yeah, but but the generations are progressively... And they take them out on other people, they, innocent. The, the humans in general, humanity, are progressively getting worse yeah. by the generation, because we are getting close to the... Well, we are in the end times, so, you know, it is expected that society is getting worse and apparently it shows in all the articles I read about abuse whether it be ch child abuse animal abuse um, well, you know with, with with no remorse with it with a with a sociopathic uh, w it's uh, kinda hard, mentality it's huh? kinda hard to make those judgments because human nature has been the same and uh, I mean what is if you want to get picky. I mean, what is worse? Uh, sacrificing your kid to Moloch? Or Malam? Or whatever? And what they do today? Oh, pagan, you know, pagan gods? Whatever. I mean, it's, it's 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 still the same. It's still filthy, disgusting. Yeah. And what about all this uh, all this information popping up left and right about uh, uh, concerning pedophiles? And uh, you think oh, these? You think these? All gays are pedophiles. Do you aren't think? They? Do you think all? Do you think these people have always been around? They just it just was never mentioned in the media. Well, they were honored in Greece. 
No, no. Let's not make the mistake of associating gay people, homosexual people, with pedophiles. Well, the right-wing religious nuts do, We're, don't th they? Those are predators. The pedophile is a form of predator. The rapist is a form of predator. But if you talk to a lunatic like uh, uh, um, like Prick Sanitarium, <laughs> I'm sorry, Rick Santorum, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the his ilk and all the other right-wing fundamentalist uh, evangelical zealots, yeah. they would tell you that uh, everything is the fault of gay people. Gorgeous. Everything's the fault of either Obama or gay people. Yeah. You notice. Oh, yeah. If it isn't Obama, even... Michelle, what was it, Michelle Bachman say? Obama brought about the end times? Something like that? I, I read a I read a banner where it says if, if a tree fell in the forest and Fox News was not there to cover it, it's still Obama's fault. Exactly. <laughs> so they're either blaming gays or Obama. Take your pick, or or and or both. But anyway, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't go through the formalities. That's that was rude of me. Welcome to uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. Hard Hitting Truth Progressive uh, Internet Talk Radio Station. And <coughs> I am here with my illustrious mentor and co host, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling yeah. this week, sir? Father's Day weekend. I, w I, w I would have liked to take a nap. You know but what? So, so would I because it, it has been raining yeah. all week and today is, rain is, will be an especially heavy rain day. Yeah. It cools things down. But with this crazy climate change, the next day the humidity and heat comes back. I think it's going to be up in the uh, yes. We got 80s. July August weather coming. Uh, you know, two or three days this week again. And not only, folks, not only is it Father's Day weekend, 2015, but is the, it is the first day of summer tomorrow, Sunday, June. Hold on. The longest day. Let me of wait the for this fucking plane to go by. This prop plane that's rudely making noise during my show. It's taken a long time to whiz by. He's landing. Yeah, he should land on his fucking. Hey, hey, hey! How dare he interfere with the great, uncensored, hard-hitting truth? Anyway, where the hell were I? Where, where was I? I don't know. Oh, yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. June longest 20, day of the year. June 21st. The first day of summer, the longest day of the year. So it is first, it is welcome to summer and Father's Day weekend 2015. Please don't buy your father a necktie. Ha! It's extremely boring gift and he probably has more than enough already. Um, Shows a lot of uh, individual uh, picking out, doesn't it? To yeah, not buy but, a but mothers, they get special gifts. Oh, and they get they're better. And they get taken out to dinner and they get cards and flowers. You know. And chocolates. Chocolates. Yeah. A father gets a friggin' necktie so he can hang himself <laughs> from all the undue stress and, and, and pressure society puts on, on men who are head of household and families. Yeah. Not fair the way men are treated and have to uh, bear the burden of all these things that they have to bear. Well, you know, but, hey. but you have cool feminists that believe in true equality, and then you have phony feminists that want their cake and eat it. They want to be equal when it comes to making money, but when it comes to uh, the social aspect of life, they want the man to do everything and pay for everything. The, Unless they're lesbians. Those are the hypocrites like uh, Republicans are. Well, yeah, but lesbians can be cool. They, no, they, 
No, they're they're they think more logically, like a, like like a lot of men think. You know what I mean? Well, they certainly don't. Like, let's take the women against pornography, for instance. If they are, if some of them are lesbians, if. we certainly don't want them making law for heterosexuals, do we? The same as we would not like it if the celibate Roman Catholic Church made law for us. That would is true. We? That is true. Okay. You mean the uh, exclusive to the Roman Catholic Church law of celibacy, which yeah. is not an old law. It's not a law at all. It's, it's their law. It's, 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 it's a rule of the church. That's great. Just like the, the Mormons have their rules and so on and so forth. And then they all attribute them to Jesus and the Bible. And that's not true, is it? Well, Republicans sure attribute everything they believe in with Jesus and the Bible, but mm -hmm. they know nothing of the God of the Bible or Jesus. No, or they don't. They don't. Not by a long shot. All right, I just want to start. I have two things to mention. I want to start by saying, um, of course. Of course. Greetings to uh, my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And greetings to all, to all of my um, uh, Facebook group administrators, Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins, Jean-Luc O'Don, and uh, Jay Cruz, to all of you. Uh, I appreciate your, your, your hard work and, you know, your dedication. Um, and... Um, how about that Bernie Sanders? It turns out he is really appealing very much to young people in the United States. And, I, and I'm, it doesn't surprise me because young people have a... a, a um, they're not set in their ways like the older generation when it comes to uh, society and politics. They tend to be more open-minded. They are well aware of the rigging of the system. And they, unlike and they believe it and accept their parents. it, unlike the parents. The parents are like what Billy Morrow tells me, what his father told him, you know, Yankee Doodle Dandy, patriotism, flag waving, this, that, and the other thing. Get on board that big corporation and right, that uh, blue chipper. And if, you, if you don't embrace capitalism and corporate America, you're a commie, you're a pinko, you're a socialist, blah, 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 and all this crap. But the young people don't fall for it. They know the system's rigged, they're aware of it, and Bernie Sanders, he just scratches them where it itches. He scratches their itch, and just like he scratches my itch. Okay. Nothing bad. <laughs> Don't okay. misinterpret that, but maybe he should, uh, on his uh, campaign trail, uh, carry around some uh, gold bond, gold bond medicated powder, powder to you know give to. Uh, well, you know he is. Uh, he is even to even in, in his own opinion, he is shockingly attracting yeah. much larger crowds than anyone else. As well he should. As well he should. I think he even beats out Hillary's crowds. Well, the or last poll... Clo close to it. The last poll uh, between him and Hillary was eight points behind. So it's only the he's beginning. He's got a little ways to yeah. catch up. And it's know. only the beginning. You see, people... You have these people that are backing up Hillary for, like, two reasons. One or two reasons. They're either women that are obsessed with putting a female president in the White House and not, not looking at what's behind the female president. Or they're one of those Democrats that still believe it's the Democratic Party of um, FDR, Truman, and JFK. Okay, it's definitely not that anymore. Hillary is in bed with Monsanto. Uh, Bill, uh, even um, Barack Obama, uh, with his 
left hand, I think I guess he's lefty, signed the Monsanto yeah, Protection Act. Very, go. very disturbing. And he wants that TPP. And he wants the go TTP. Through, baby. And 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 his fellow Democrats are against it, and they well should be. And they well should be. Even Hillary, even the corporatist Hillary Clinton. She's against it, and uh, why keep giving the corporations more power? But he he doesn't have to do. Being that he only has a little bit more time left before he can retire, I guess. Barack Obama really doesn't have to kowtow or do anything for corporations because what are they going to do? They're going to like they're going to like impeach him. They're going to they fire him. A lot of money. Huh? They gave him a lot of money. And he must have took it. Well, of course he took it. You know, I mean... Uh, so therefore he owes. Now do you see what I mean about not being the Democratic Party? Jeff JFK, Truman, and, uh, 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 and, and uh, FDR? However, someone on, uh, on the hard-hitting group last night uh, someone said something about Republicans, and then she said the Democrats are just the same. So I corrected her, and I said, uh, "Don't forget the crumbs." Yeah, don't they're both the crumbs. they're both corporatists, but don't forget them cr them crumbs. You want as bad as they are, you they want, still will give you some crumbs. You want a few crumbs or a handful of crumbs, um, like for with with a um, a Democrat like uh, a corporatist Democrat like let's take Hillary Clinton she could say anything she wants during the campaign she could sound very progressive all she wants to but in reality when she gets elected you'll get a few crumbs with Bernie Sanders you'll get a big whopping one hand velvet cake one handful two handfuls <laughs> or a big giant loaf of hot Italian semolina bread, okay. Mm -hmm. But with a Republican, you will get absolutely nothing. Not a not zil a zilch. zero zilch. zilch, nothing zero. The center of a be of a donut. Hey, what are them? Not called? the jelly donuts. Wait, wait, they're called munchkins. Not the jelly donuts. The center of the donut, munchkins. Yeah, at Dunky Donuts. Yeah, Munchkin is like a little yeah. tiny uh, Zeppeli with more sugar in it. Oh, incidentally, of course, the donuts have shrank and the prices have gone up. What else ah. is new? What else is new? Which is, <laughs> which is leading? But anyway, don't forget those crumbs. Sometimes, until the system is completely changed, which it really has to be, we might have to vote for the lesser of the two evils again. We might, but what I'm hoping on is that, let's say the corporatist uh, Gorgon, the, uh, the witch Hillary Clinton, gets nominated. <clears throat> By that time, Bernie Sanders will be such a household name that his, and his momentum might be so huge that he could very easily go back to running as an independent if he doesn't get the Democratic nomination because he would he would already get the face time that he's yeah, looking for. But four years from then he's, he's probably going to be too old to run. Well maybe maybe, maybe he'll pick a, a, a... I don't know what he is maybe now. He'll 70 pick, something? Maybe he'll pick a, a, a humdinger of a vice presidential you know what I mean? Running mate. You know I'm sure his staff are going to be very qualified uh, with along the same line of thinking as Bernie Sanders. You know what I'm saying? His Secretary of State, his VP. Yes, but I'm saying if Hillary gets in and she fulfills her four years, Bernie will probably think he's too old to run again. I don't think Bernie That's would. That's my point. I don't think Bernie would run after this, after 2016. No. No. Bernie, Bernie's gonna. I don't think he's so. gonna retire. Maybe get his own talk show. Maybe. You no, know, no. Bernie's gonna. No. I, if I was Bernie Sanders, I wouldn't. I wouldn't run again four years from. From next year. Are you kidding me? 
I don't know. This is it. This is it. But this anyway, is the chance. that's it. That's it. Now. Okay, where is my shillelagh? My black thorn shillelagh. Yeah. The Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee for this week is my former favorite Mexican restaurant, Il Rancho, Il Rancho. Of, of Main Street in Hackensack, New Jersey. Shame on you. And the reason why I say that is that I went there Wednesday, this, this past Wednesday, thinking I was going to get my wonderful, satisfying, all-you-can-eat Mexican food for $12, and lo and behold, they told me that they ended it. After all these years, they decided to get greedy and stingy, and they ended the Wednesday all-you-can-eat, and this is why there was only one table customers sitting at it. Aside from me walking in, there was only one table with customers. And uh, sometimes I've seen it before with uh, this other restaurant called El Norte. El Norte, yes. On Route 46 in Lodi. And they had, they had for many years all you can eat on Monday. And it brought in a lot of people that usually watch sporting events on Monday, especially Monday Night Football, they would come in, partake in the all-you-can-eat, then they would be thirsty uh -huh. and buy frozen margaritas and, and stay all night and watch the game and drink beer and, and brought in more business. But no, no, he didn't think of that. He got rid of the all-you-can-eat and he started pumping up the nightclub on the weekend expecting to just make even more money on booze. Uh, whittle down, get rid of all the specials on the menu, uh, put emphasis on the liquor, and take emphasis off the food. Well, every time I drive by El Norte, I don't see anybody in the parking lot. Now you're talking about the one uh, that used to, uh, that was by the circle. Yeah. yeah. Because the one that was over here, right here, up, you know, right up the street mm -hmm. is down. They no, that down. The, the, this one is um, <laughs> yeah, the, ori the original is on Outwater, uh, uh, on the corner of Outwater Lane and um, Arthur Treacher, where Treacher where, used to where be. Where Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips used to be, may it rest in peace. Many years ago. Yeah. Anyway, I, mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And I, I also enjoy the old Roy Rogers, uh, you know, roast beef and all that, the Fixins Bar and all that. Up in the Pathmark parking lot? Well, there was one in El Elmwood Park also. I worked there as a kid. I used to go to the one in the Pathmark yeah. Park. I, I, I put the roast beefs, the uh, whatever they were, top rounds in the uh, in the in the convection ovens. Ooh. You know, and I used to cut used to cut the crust. Oh, that crust, man, off the top of the roast beef. Same thing in Shoprite. When I worked in Shoprite as a kid, we had the same thing: convection ovens. Slice a piece of that crust off the top. There's nothing like it. That's they used the, to eat Arby's. Arby's is like is like steakum. It's like yeah. I don't know what the hell it is. Roadkill or it's no, it's not. I think the sauce used to give me diarrhea. I got sick off Arby's once. Yes, yes, yes. That has happened. I was sick all day off Arby's. I never went back. That has happened. I, uh, John Stewart doesn't. Uh, Particularly careful. I, 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 I ordered an Arby's roast beef. I noticed it wasn't real roast beef. It was mystery meat. Oy. And I and then I ordered that with uh, one of their uh, orange cream sickle milkshakes, and that that tasted disgusting. Yeah. It, it tasted like tang. It's like if you took tang or to Sunny D and, and and put the powder in a uh, in fake. In fake I used to drink tang. milk with, because yeah, some fast food restaurants, fast food places, they don't give you real dairy milkshakes. They put um, um, it's like a like a like a non-dairy cream, like coffee made, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, non-dairy yeah. creamer. Hydro Icing crap. Hydrogen poisonous hydrogenated fats. Well, you they, see what they're doing with they, the almond they milk they too. Whip it up, don't you? Uh huh. 
because of California drought, California normally grows most of the almonds. almonds yeah. So if you buy a, a, a supermarket almond milk, they're using very few almonds and all carrageenan, all filler. But yeah. getting back to El Norte, it didn't work out. He got greedy. Same thing with Pub 46 in Clifton. He had a the original owners. They were German. They had they originally owned the steakhouse. They had a beautiful big menu with all kinds of specials, blackboard specials every week. They got rid of it. They just had they just make these um, what they call bar snacks. Yeah. You know. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And everything was the booze, pushing the, the booze. booze. Yes. That's so what, what happens? You only make money on the weekend. Number one. There number, used to be a no. restaurant <coughs> before El Norte over here, right on Forty Six. Served Italian food. Yeah, La Briscola. And they had big portions, man. Oh really? Oh yeah. Shit, wonder, I used to eat that. Wonder why it didn't catch on. Maybe because they had big portions. <laughs> Maybe they didn't advertise, you know. They went some, out of business. Some some Europeans are very cheap. With, they're very tight with the dollar, and they they won't spend money on advertisement. You have to advertise. If you have a special, like for for one or two nights, you gotta put that in the local paper. But getting back to um, Pub Forty Six, yeah, yeah, they push the bar. I mean, push the booze. Now they have to hire more bouncers because now the young people. You know, they changed the DJ from playing oldies to playing uh, lousy, d disgusting rap music. They get a young crowd in there. The young crowd, has, uh, there's fights galore. Uh. Every Friday and Saturday, there's like half a dozen fights break out. Now you have to hire more bouncers. Then the cops come. And the neighbors complain because of the noise and the fighting. And they go out in the park. What do, what do young people do when they leave the bar? Besides being totally drunk, yeah. to the point of vomiting, they go out, they shout, they hang out in the parking lot by the cars, they don't go home. So the neighbors complain late at night, at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're out there screaming. Neighbors complain, then the town comes down on the bar. So yeah. what good, what I'm trying to get at is, what good does this greed in the restaurant industry accomplish for them? Because they end up biting, it ends up biting them on the ass. Ultima on you, uh, Il Rancho, and by the way, the uh, chicken enchiladas with tomatillo sauce, I'm sorry, the, um, the carnitas enchiladas, which is pulled pork, um, with tomatillo sauce, it sucked, they downgraded on the food, and that's it. Alright, so let us sink our teeth into these readings. I wasn't too long-winded on the Chisler's Hall of Shame. <coughs> Alrighty. For all those people who have not been under a rock for the last week, well, all Mr. Trump, all Republicans are has gotten into the race. Yeah, the, the man that would probably ban hairstyling as a profession, <laughs> if you look at his head. He's I, I, I listened to his speech, by the way. So did I. <laughs> I have never been a supporter of Governor Christie for so many reasons. Spending taxpayers' money, taxpayers money on a separate election for the New Jersey Senate race, the George Washington Bridge scandal, the pension funding fiasco, economic policies that have resulted in the downgrading of the state's credit rating, and his current absentee governorship. During his undeclared and probably doomed campaign for president. Having said that, I believe I have found an even worse candidate than Christie to join the Republican clown car, which of course has turned into a clown bus. <laughs> For the party's nomination, da -da -da -da! Donald 
Trump! Yeah, Donald Trump, uh, he said something derogatory about, um, uh, I don't know if it was immigrants or minorities or, I don't know, he made a statement during his speech. Well, that was a he, uh, shot, you know. He called Jeb Jebby out. Well, that's good. Uh, supporting Common Core and, 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 and well, no, the I don't immigrant mean, situation. I mean, I don't mean, um, Watching the news and cable programs that covered his announcements, I was appalled at his, this person's lack of knowledge about policies and the actions of government. His statements about Mexico, the American economy, and tariff policy were evidence of his lack of qualification as a presidential candidate. As I watched the several interviews of people wearing Trump for President shirts, I was not surprised that many of these people were American or foreign tourists just looking for some excitement. And I hope this, this reading includes what I'm going to say anyway at the end about this. Well, I'm going to add right here the that speech. he paid actors and etc fifty dollars to applaud for him oh multi-billionaire could he spare it multi-billionaire donald trump gave fifty dollars a head to cheer him on whenever they can get a deal they take it i mean he's the uh what was one of his books the art of the deal the art of the deal yeah yeah he's an opportunist yeah. extraordinaire there you go He's ban it went bankrupt four times, I believe. So, you know, I mean, I mean, he can point out all he wants that he's worth $8.9 billion or whatever. Well, his background is going to reflect how he would manage the country. I mean, well, that's he how certainly ain't going to build a fence down in, on the border and have Mexico pay for it. How the hell is he going to do that? First of all, that is a mighty long fence. You got second of right all, <laughs> Mexico pay for it? Yeah. In his dreams. Absolutely. You'd have to have war with Mexico to do that, believe me. No, they just won't, they'll laugh at him, they just won't pay for it. They just say, you out of your mind? I am certain that this is an other of his self-promoting stunts. Have the Republicans found their ringmaster for their circuits? Can't wait to see the first Republican debate and watch the Trump show. Well, he's, a, he's an attention whore. He, you know, he's, uh, when oh, people true. stop talking about him, it bothers him. He oh, wants, yes. He has to get back in, a, in the limelight, spot, in yes. the limelight, the spotlight, yeah. Yes. You know, and this is what they do. They, uh, they become, um, they do something outrageous, or they say something outrageous, crazy, and they uh, or infamous. And well, if you'll see, take a look at this picture later. I'll show you. He was wearing typical uh, Republican garb: a blue serge suit, yeah. a red tie, yeah, bright and red. the flag lapel pin. <laughs> Yeah, oh, the, the, by the way, that tea bagger that hang that once in a while hangs out with Billy Morrow. He um, he's not a politician. He's not wealthy, but he has a little old glory uh, l l l pin on his jacket. Hey, yeah. nice guy. Yeah, nice guy. Patriot. Oh yeah, yes. Patriot. Yeah. Yes. Moving on, the letter writer states that she took a jab at Republicans for an economy her party has driven to near ruin in just six years. I find this comment nothing short of astonishing. According to factcheck.org, during President Obama's tenure, these are the numbers as of January 2015. 
6.37 million jobs created. Unemployment is down to 5.6%. And the stock market is up a whopping 182%. How anyone can absorb these facts and come to the stated conclusion completely escapes me. The author's conclusion accurately describes the economic situation when Obama took office in January 2009. Unemployment was close to 8%. The stock market was in free fall. And our economy was hemorrhaging jobs at a pace not seen since the Great Depression. I believe that a certain segment of our population is simply disinterested in facts. As such, they can arrive at any conclusions that they have absolutely no grounding whatsoever in reality. It's almost like they're um common person in the United States is more concerned with the personality of the politician being entertained by them rather than facts, you know. Well, that's true. What they look like, the the uh, the hype, sensationalism, the you know, what how how the person can can motivate the crowd, you know, the showmanship of the politician instead of what they can really do. Now this uh what is it? Fact factsfinding.org? What is this called? No, fact check. Dot is this like competition for Snopes? Maybe. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Uh, anyway, I you remember the young lady that used to live across the street here? I told you about when uh, George W. Bush was running for president and she said that uh, she's voting for Bush. And when asked why, of course, she said, well, I trust him more than uh, Gore. Than Al Gore. And how, how did she base her her feelings of trust? trust? Well, she it was just what you just said before. His face. Yeah, his face, face, his showmanship, his, you know, his cowboy hat. Who the hell knows? And this is a person... It does didn't have a pot to piss in. This is probably a person that Ann Coulter does not wish to vote. <laughs> Even though she voted Republican. I mean, idiots, idiots that don't have a pot to piss in that vote Republican, they believe the lies of... Where's my prop? They believe the lies of trickle-down economics, when in reality, we have siphoned up to the top 20% economics, the devil's economics. There is no trickle-down economics. So all the Fox News and Republican lies, these poor suckers fall for it. Well, you know, actually, uh, the vast majority of the people who vote, they're, they're not interested in economics, okay? When you speak, if I write about economics, I know damn well that half my audience is going to sleep. I, th okay. You know what? They don't understand how important it is. When they used to have all those political shows on Sunday morning, there was nobody that I personally knew that got up on a Sunday morning to watch any of those political shows. I watched the McLaughlin Report at 11. John McLaughlin. You know, I used to, I worked bye with... Bye-bye! I worked with his son in uh, Bally's uh, Total Fitness in Englewood Cliffs, New uh -huh. Jersey, when I was a personal trainer. That was one of the places I worked, and I worked with his son. And I said, how's your dad at, at home? He says, well, he's moody. I mean, he has his moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kid was, he was a nice kid, though, too. Even though, you know, he had well, money, he had money. He's been a nice, on a long time. He's a real nice kid, yeah. Like uh, Meet the Press. Meet the Press. Uh, meet, meet the Press is more of a uh, bunch of Showmanship, like yeah. you were talking about. Is Crossfire before. still in existence? Uh, no, I do not think so. That was when people just yelled at each other from across the desk, right? Pretty much. Yeah, well, because that was the conservative show, uh, the Jumbaloni, I forget his name. Oh, it was conservative? 
Why, you didn't know it was conservative? Crossfire? Of course. I didn't know that. It's what you might call it, the goddamn conservative. Uh, what, what the hell's his name? His, his name escapes me at the moment. Um. Jesus. He was conservative. He was, he was the, uh, the, uh, top dog in the conservative movement at the time. With his, uh, uh magazine or newsletter or whatever the hell it was. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, he pulled himself up by the bootstraps. His father gave him $100,000 to start his, his, his uh, magazine. Hey, yeah. So he was a silver spooner. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of, shame on you, CNN. Chisler's Hall of Shame. CNN is not covering Bernie Sanders. No. And I don't mean Bernice Anders, like uh, Sarah Palin calls them. Remember, all this we are discussing with these progressive discussions is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Capitalism in a conch shell. He's got you got that? Right. You see it? You see yeah. the little conch conchella? Conchella? Yeah. Alright. Getting back to the letter, everyone is entitled to his own opinion. Uh, brother, how many times do I gotta hear that? Regardless of the source of the information. On the other hand, no one is entitled to his own facts. No, 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 because then they become altered facts. They become corrupted facts. Yeah, then they're no longer facts, are they? Right. Just like uh, uh, Soviet Union monkeyed around with Karl Marx's uh, uh, socialism. Karl Marx was communism, not communism. socialism. And they made it into a totalitarian government. You know, that's what they say, you know, it's totalitarian. You know, the Castro too, right? Fidel. Castro too, yeah, they, he's been in power for 53 years. His partner who got assassinated, he wanted a more honest, I'm assuming, honest form of socialism for Cuba. Was it now who, you mean, you mean Jake, Batista? Jake, Jake Lavar, Jake Lavar, what's his name? Che Guevara? Che Lavar, yeah. He was, he was, uh, was uh, I thought he was in the United States, Che. No. Oh. No, he he was part of the Cuban Revolution. I think. I don't think so. No. I think I think so. Anyway. Whatever. The point of it is, they wanted uh, from day. The problem is, when a person or group or whatever takes over a country, they don't want to get out of power. They want to stay in power as long as they can. So they make it so, as Picard would say. In other words, they, they try to make it into a dynasty. That's correct. Because the longer they're there, the more the more riches, the more moolah they make. And they're sitting pretty. That's correct. With power and money. That's correct. And probably lots of women. Yeah. Israel's Antiquities Authority says Archaeologists have discovered a rare 3,000 year old inscription of a name mentioned in the Bible. The name Eshbal ben Beda appears on a large ceramic jar. Eshbal don't name your, your kid this, by the way. Of the Bible, was a son of King Saul. Archaeologist Joseph Garfunkel, Finkel, not, not, Simon. not singer Garfunkel, not Simon. Garfunkel. and Sour Ganner, Gainer, Sour said, Grapes. The jar belonged to a different Eshbal likely the owner of an agricultural estate. They said Tuesday that it is the first time the name was discovered in an ancient inscription. It is one of only four inscriptions discovered 
from the biblical 10th century BC kingdom of Judah when King David is said to have reigned Tenth century, it's like a thousand, thousand, thousand years, years BC before Christ. Christ goes back to oh, two thousand well, years, right? The right, the right wing religionists are up in in arms because BC has been changed to BCE or something of that nature. Yeah, BCE. They slap, they slap the E on it. Yeah. So they don't like that. <coughs> what does E mean? Uh, edited? I have no idea what edited BCE by, is. By Republicans? It's not before Christ. Okay, that's what they're up in arms about. Yeah. And they, they probably... You're taking Christ out of the public square! <laughs> they probably, they're probably saying that the dinosaurs hung out with the, uh, the people from the Bible. Yes, they did. The and Old Testament people. The reason they are not here is because uh, humans hunted them to death. Hunted them to death. Oh man. Oh yeah, you mean. Can you see yourself you mean, hunting a T Rex to death? You mean those little short men with spears and chariots were able, and bows were able to bring down all those big T Rexes? Yeah. Without high powered rifles. Oh gosh. One more before we uh, yeah, sure, cut, cut sure, here. Sure. Le Bourget, France. European scientists are confident they will soon be able to start experiments on the surface of a speeding comet after a spacecraft lost for months on its surface suddenly woke up this week. Wait a minute. They want to land something? Oh, it's already landed. Must be a, a one of those icy... The batteries weren't working. It must have been one of those icy comets. Not, not Whatever. A, not it a, was asleep. Not a fiery comet. Oh, the... Oh, the, uh, the okay, the craft. Craft was asleep. It rebooted itself. Correct. Barbara Cazzoni. Lander Control Center Engineer. It's all her fault. For the German Euro Space Center, Aerospace Center, said information gleaned from the Phil, it's a fillet landers brief transmissions on Saturday and Chick Sunday Chick Chick -fil -A? had begun to be deciphered. It's sponsored by Chick Fil A. I believe Chick Fil A changed its name. It's a Chicky Poo. You realize, of course, that aspartame changed its name. Yeah, amino sweet. That's correct. To make it sound more uh, natural, when more it's pleasing, more to, pleasing, yeah. but it's still the same dangerous chemical. Amino sweet. Yes. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. You Thank hear you. that, people? Uh, the tricks that uh, corporations are allowed to play when they're not regulated. Well, it's the same thing like when politicians get into trouble or something, they hire a PR firm to, 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 to change all the bad stuff into good, you know? She said scientists got only good things, adding all four of Philae's solar panels are collecting energy and that the spacecraft's internal temperature was in the correct range. Mark McCogrian, a senior European Space Agency advisor said, scientists need a stable communications link with the spacecraft to begin the experiments. So this craft is 100% from Europe. Yeah, it looks that way. And they were able to land on a, a speeding, comet. A speeding comet. comet. How mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. I wonder. Um, I wonder if they can maintain communication with that craft. Well, now they can because it's woke up. Wow. It's waked it up, man. It's woken up. 
so I, and they're the the the, uh, the the solar panels are working so should be alive for quite some time can't beat science man can't stop science like George Costanzo said can't beat science science moves on can't stop science it's true it's true and, and, it's, and it's advancing at a rapid rate all, the, all uh, science the a Roman Catholic Church tried once to stop science hey, from what I hear robotics uh, being able to think for themselves is practically here oh that's a long ways away if indeed it ever occurs so these articles are probably it's probably wishful thinking if you go back to the 40s the 50s and the 60s and you read popular mechanics yeah. and those kinds of things oh we were supposed to be living in the jetsons world today well all i gotta say is congratulations to uh el salvador for kicking out monsanto i think costa rica did too i think I th i'm not sure but it Congratulations to all the countries that have kicked out Monsanto. Uh, you hear that, India? How come you're having such a problem kicking uh, out Monsanto? Politics, my friend, politics. Ah, uh -huh. your leaders perhaps, perhaps as, got their palms greased. Well, hey, uh, what was it? Uh, some time ago, 240,000 Indian farmers and everything have uh, committed suicide. Because of, uh, you know, they can't get their seeds, they can't... Uh, so everybody's saying them. no, well, of course, except the United States. Everybody's saying no to Monsanto, except the United States and, and India. Some countries have even gone completely organic again. Not, not many, but some of them have. Some of them have, but, uh, which is great, great news. Now you see, if the TPP were passed, right, and India were in it, and I, I believe it's in it because it is a uh, a Asian thing. There's many countries in there. Well, it is in Asia, it's yes. in India. But in other words, Monsanto would now take this to uh, their uh, arbiter, and they would sue India. And India would have to pay them all the profits that they would lose by not selling their product in India. What if, That's the TPP. What if the loss of sovereignty? What if the foreign government says, "Hey, we're a separate country. Monsanto's an American company. We're a separate government. We're a separate country." Like China would say, "Screw you." If they agree to the treaty, they must abide by the treaty. If they agree to the treaty, yeah. if that's what I'm saying. All right, listen. If the TPP passes, any country that's involved in it and starts acting up and says, "Well, we don't want your product," bye bye. Now, do you see the corporations some, going to win? Do you see something strange with this picture? The the people that are for the TTP, T, I mean, TPP, TPP, Trans Pacific Partnership, right? Are the Republicans? And President Barack Obama, but but President Barack Obama is a Democrat, but the Democrats are against it, and rightly so. Some Democrats. Oh, some Democrats. Yes, there are Democrats that are for it. Oh, so then they're the, the corporatist, blue dog, sell-out Democrats. Whoever got paid by Monsanto. Demon, demon crats. You know, whoever got paid by those, the, the, those companies. You got re, re thug, the TPP. Rethuglicons and demon crats. Those that are the two, both sides of the same coin, corporate. Except for the crumbs, please. Corporatists. Oh, oh, we, always mention we that. We mustn't forget those little crumbs. Yes. Oh, how exciting. Jesse Ventura said he's sick and tired of voting for the lesser of the two evils, and I don't blame him. A lot of people are, but uh, it seems that the nothing changes. Nothing changes. Oh. I don't know. This is Steve the cat. Yeah, but some uh, some other cat is out there or Sc something scuffling. Because he got scared. Oh, it's the other black and white cat. There's no, that was That's Steve. No. Oh. Yeah, but he's looking. There's somebody. He's looking. Else out Something's there. over there. All right, listen. We're gonna take our lunch break. 
the Reverend Dr. Bill's Gastronomic Delight, and then we're going to be joined right now by uh, how, to, how to Defeat a Conservative uh, Bible Quotes. Just simply hit the pause button, read and learn, and then you will uh, hear a commercial voiceover specialist who is standing by, uh, William Hamilton Morrow III, for promo and his words of wisdom. By the way, before you uh, yeah. sign off here, uh, they want to take Hamilton off the tent. Yeah, they want to take Hamilton put a woman on. and put a woman on. I think they should put a Native... You know, I'm, I'm very glad you brought that up. I think they should put a Native American on the $10 bill. It's high time they pay some respect to the indigenous people of the United States, okay? Uh, all of us are illegals, according to them, and uh, they have been uh, severely mistreated for a long time now and abused and an, a Native American deserves to be on the $10 bill much more than a female to what? Uh, to appease all the feminists? Probably. Well, appease the Native Americans. <laughs> and I think the buffalo or the, or the bison should go back on the nickel. He ain't on the nickel anymore? N no. I, I don't see any nickels lately. Nah, they're around. What about the dimes? Mr. Lady Liberty used to be on them. You know what I hope? Oh, the mercury dimes. Mercury right? dimes. You yeah. know what I hope? I hope they discontinue pennies. Pennies they will. To soon. me, pennies are the cockroach of money. It's costing more to make the pennies than it's worth. Well, you could put copper to much better use than making pennies. And I don't even think pennies are 100% copper. No, they're not. Anymore. But no. copper is is mu isn't copper much more valuable in, in electronics? But the money is not valuable in and of itself. Electron we don't do that anymore. Oh, yeah, I think the we, pennies made of zinc. Uh, well, you saw that uh, Jesse Ventura video about the the Fed, about the about money and uh, the value of money. I don't have to look at uh, Jesse Ventura's. I know all about the Fed and Jekyll Island and why it was created and etc. Federal Reserve and all that you know, crap. It's all again to, to make money. It's privatization. That's what it is. You give all. We're, we're gonna. We'll read this one here we're, later, and we'll get. We're gonna that. touch upon privatization, yeah. just like the yeah. the Republicans want to privatize Social Security. I guess they don't want to privatize. They want to get rid of it, right? No. What do they want to do? They want it private. Private accounts. Well, which, you, which will be handled well, by you, Wall Street. Well, you, you debate these, all these articles on the Internet. They say they want to privatize Social Security. I just said that. They want to make a private account out of it so that Wall Street will handle it, much like a 401k. That you means, will be paying them a fee. That means kiss your, your retirement survival goodbye unless you retire rich. Unless you're a rich old geezer, well, bingo! It ain't gonna. You're not gonna live on. If Wall Street, if Wall Street is controlling your retirement, you saw what happened in 2007, 2008. Kiss to the 401ks. Kiss your ass goodbye. They went bye bye. But that's what they want. They want more money for their friends on Wall Street. At at the of course, just like just like wars. Modern wars with war profiteering at the expense of the little guy always. At the expense of the little guy. Always. They could care less. They don't care. All right. We'll be back.
because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay. We're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your words of wisdom and promo. And we're back for the second half of our show, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I want to mention a couple things uh, 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 to, to uh, induct into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. First of all, shame on you. The company that makes designer whey protein that they sell in health food stores and vitamin shops. It's crap, man. It's absolutely crap. You mix it with, let's say, milk, and it lumps up into rocks. Literally, into rocks. It does not blend. And, and it has a terrible... The chocolate doesn't even taste like real chocolate. It only has, like, what is it, 17 or 18 grams protein it has very low mm. grams per serving per scoop of protein compared to other companies terrible terrible product but they advertise a lot they spend a lot of money in advertising a lot of products too designer got way, a variety yeah. of products right but I've had better of course uh, uh, muscle tech I believe they make muscle milk it's not a bad company my favorite is still the healthy and fit uh, anabolic, uh, I'm, I mean healthy and fit whey pro amino, whey pro amino by healthy and fit. Uh, it mixes instantly, you don't even need a shaker. It's uh, very high in, in whey protein, uh, like, like 45 grams oh. per, per two ounce scoop. Um, tastes great, it's stevia sweetened uh, with digestive enzymes also and it um, it's just a great product you know, great value for the money but they don't spend money on advertisement you know very rarely do you see it advertised but they've been around since the early 80s I believe healthy and fit but anyway aside from that Designer way. I want to talk about um, something else. I want to talk about liquor. I was discussing with the Reverend Dr. Bill off the air that no matter what liquor store I I enter in the state of New Jersey, especially northern New Jersey, all the bottles, no matter what it is, whiskey, bourbon, scotch, uh, vodka, rum, it, they're all over $20. They're astronomically priced. Not the beer, not the wine. Hard liquor. Astronomically priced. So either there is some sort of heavy-duty, unfair state and possible federal tax, no state, let's just say state, state taxes on hard liquor 
or the liquor store owners are a bunch of crooks. Mm. But uh, you, you're aware of that too, right, Dr. Bill? I'm just aware of the high prices. Yes. I don't know why. I remember a six packs of beer. No, that's, that's like a dollar or something. Well, no, you're not going to get that. Well, why not? Under God's economic standards, do not change. No, a, a bargain for good beer, like, like for Yinling Lager, uh, mm -hmm. America's oldest brewery, uh, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, it cost me, like, uh, for six pack, uh, six or seven dollars. There you go. Okay, but you're getting a high quality, dark, old world style lager. Now, I used to get this beer from China called Dynasty that wasn't that bad. Or, or uh, what's the other one? Genesee Cream Ale was also cheap. You know, less than six bucks, definitely, you know. Uh, Dynasty was even less than that. But I don't see it anymore. Um, of course, the uh, all the shitty, chemical-laden, preservative-laden American beers, the crap that's out there, they've jacked up all the prices on them. You know, your nationally advertised beers. You know, your Budweiser's, your Coors, your Miller's. Michelob's. Michelob, yeah, yeah, they, cause they, they advertise quite often, very often. And of course, during major sporting events, Good. which cost them a lot of money to advertise during them, you know, uh, World Series, Super Bowl, mostly Super Bowl. Uh, some people, for some reasons, uh, football fans tend to love cheap-ass, crappy beer. What about Mexican beer? They want a, they want a lot of money for that, sir. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Corona and Modelo. Yeah, Modelo. Uh, I'm sure in Mexico it's... Well, I've seen the same beer in, in Mexico and it was like... I see it advertised tiny, once in a while. It was a tiny fraction of what they were charging in the United States. Because mm -hmm. even though it's from Mexico, where everything is made extremely cheaply and it's right over the border, once it gets to the United States stores, they considered it an import. Yeah. And they make you pay for the fact that it's imported. There you go. Canadian beer is not cheap either. It's it's great beer. Molson's Cream Ale, Molson's Golden Ale. Um, what is the other beer? Labatt's um, um, Moosehead. I used to drink that Moosehead beer. Uh, Grizzly is another Canadian company. Every one of them tasted great particularly Molson's, Molson's Golden and Molson's Cream Ale. But, they're imports, you know. So maybe it's the fault of the American retail stores in general, combined with some sort of hidden liquor taxes coming from the states. You know, to maybe to pay for all the... Maybe it's called inflation. Yeah, so what's inflation? Besides jacking up the price? That's inflation. Why? Inflation is when you put too much money into an economy chasing too few goods. The Federal Reserve has been doing it for months. They've been pumping in uh, $80 billion a month or whatever the hell it was. QEA1, QE2, QE 103. So it's not backed by anything tangible or anything? None anything of the dollars are. Substantially no backed. No country today, their money is not backed by anything except their promise to pay. Promise. Yeah. To pay. Uh, they're all off the gold standard. There's no gold standard anymore. So like a bunch of glorified IOUs. FDR took us off the gold standard. Nixon took us off the gold standard. If we were on the gold standard, only so much money could be produced at a given time. Which means and that would mean a shrunken economy. That means the economy would be so microscopically shrunk. Can you imagine? And the, and w the United States will, will in fact be 
100% flat broke. Once upon a time, there was no credit in the United States. So can you imagine what a small economy there was at that time? You couldn't charge your air conditioner, refrigerator, microwave oven? No, so people that didn't have the money on hand you did were out of luck. Like another, what, what, what Iron Man Vinnie Blake always says, if you don't have the cash, it wasn't meant to be. And that's how it was before credit cards. Yeah, well, if you didn't have the cash sometimes, you never did get it. So whatever you wanted, you didn't get. So therefore, your, that's what upward, I meant. It wasn't meant your to be. upward mobility was garbaggio. Well, you, okay. you, you told me, I think, only 10% since the beginning the inception of, of this country, inception yeah. of this country, only ten percent ever raised their yes, standard the of living. Upward mobility thing is a myth. Upward mobility. It's a myth. That's the the self-made, pull yourself up by the bootstraps individual. Yeah. That's what I was trying to tell some jabroni on the uh, political group. Uh, forget about this uh, rags to riches. Uh, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Uh, that's a fairy tale, man. You, if you don't get breaks, if you don't get big breaks in life, you're not going from rags to riches. Well, so, they keep selling it very well. He's trying to tell me that uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook's book that came out about his life, that he was a poor kid. I don't believe that. Well, what about Mr. Marco Rubio? He says he was poor? No. This is a country of haves and soon-to-haves, not haves and have-nots. So what he's saying is the have-nots don't count anymore. No, they're he's invisible. saying there aren't any. There's no have-nots? No, they are have-soons. They are Th soon going to have. <coughs> How? <coughs> That's never explained. And nobody calls him out on this. That's what amazes the me. The same fantasy just continues. Nobody in the media calls him out right then and there. The have soon Because he's not in a uh, general venue. He's in some right-wing joint. Okay? Soon they don't say these things. Have. Soon to have. That's Where correct. are the opportunities for soon to have? Well, soon to have. Yeah, soon, soon you're gonna jerk off. That's what you're gonna have. Soon to have. There's no opportunities out there. There's no jobs out there. Soon to have. Yeah, if if if, if somebody like Bernie Sanders cleans out the barn, there'll be soon to haves. Yeah, man. Well, as far as I know, there's there's some people. There's some people working on a. Guaranteed minimum income for the United States. And it's like $12,000. Well, now, if you gave uh, $12,000 to, you know, the people in the United States who need it, then you would be able to do away with, like, say, basic welfare, basic food stamps, things like that. But twelve thousand dollars is still poverty level. Oh, so very, again, very much so. So again, where, where are these people who are so righteous, giving away their two coats? They're not. And inviting us for the meat at their table. Where is this? Yeah. Where you don't want to be giving the poor something that keeps them poor. You want to lift them out of poverty. That's never done. Hey, wasn't I? Uh, I was reading this article that was uh, sounded pretty good to me. That the country of Greece decided to say no to this. Uh, this what is it? World Bank extortion? They're trying to yeah, pull on well, Greece, and they use Iceland as an example of yeah, how to deal with banksters. They're being pressured. Yeah. They're being pressured. Greece is being pressured really bad. Yeah. Well, you know what is happening is uh, China, China has established a World Bank 
like the IMF with their own currency with their own money and other countries are joining them putting in money too yeah Australia and the UK and uh, a lot of other ones. you said that so big once that happens it will be competition for the dollar as the reserve currency especially if world. if the rest of the world more countries start going with China's new currency and uh, and China has suppose uh, China when when they go to the IMF they say yeah oh oh we'll lend you a few billion dollars but you got to do this that and the other thing yeah now now Bitcoin is not part of China's new no this is separate it's international but it's Bitcoin as far as I know has to do with the internet oh uh, okay yeah, Something so like PayPal. So what? Yeah, what you're saying is China is is declaring uh, head-on competition for the U.S. dollar. That is correct. Against the U.S. dollar. That is correct. Even though it it, it, it does a lot of business with the United States. Well, who do you think made it rich enough to do these things? They got corrupted from us about how to how to how to run. Talking about the money. Oh. We gave them the money because we buy their shit. Okay, that's where the money went, and now they use it against us. Bingo. Bingo. Be careful who you befriend or who you help. Or well, it doesn't work. <laughs> Here's the the right wingers now. They're screaming and yelling about Obama and Cuba. Okay? It's about time the embargo lifted. But you lifted. never hear them saying anything about China. No, because that's... China's communist. Because that's where, all the, that's where all the cheap labor comes from. There you go. Because a, a Republican only cares about his or her God, which is money. And the corporations are, you know, selling their shit. Over here, made over there. So they're not. They're, they're, they have a hands-off policy with That's China correct. because they are. They are the people, the bribers, the people that are paying them off are the the big fat cat corporations over here. And they don't want to. They don't want to ever buck the corporations that are paying them off. That is true. That's probably why. That they is true. That's probably why they're picking on little old Cuba. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, and Cuba's the same thing. See, Cuba's a communist too. So why can't we trade with them? What the hell's the problem trading with them? We're trading with China. The only people that are suffering by all this are the poor Cuban. Ah. The poor Cubans. The Castro family is not hurting. The embargo is hurting the poor people of Cuba. You know, so as it always does, like right now. Who do you think suffering in Russia with the sanctions? Putin? I don't think so. No, Putin's living high on the hog. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and the sanctions ain't doing too well in Iran either. I'm sure the U.S. interest in the Ukraine is connected to profit. Everything the United States Obviously. does internationally is connected to making money. There you go. Anyway, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. Speaking of money. Speaking of money, 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 money. Oh. We're long, we were long-winded today, sir. With two weeks left in the fiscal year, state officials acknowledge Thursday that the lottery is unlikely to meet its budget projections. Despite nearing record ticket sales and the addition of more retailers. Really? The shortfall would be the second in the two years since Governor Christie outsourced the lottery's sales no. and marketing to the conglomerate North Star, New Jersey. Isn't there anything they don't want to privatize no. or outsource? A move 
that was contested by the Democratic-controlled legislature. North Star has also revised its net income targets downward five times in that period. Once in 2014, twice this year, and twice for the 2016 fiscal year. Total ticket sales for 2014 were $2.9 billion according to the lottery's annual report. But after prize payouts, retailer commissions, fees and administrative costs, that meant 965 million went to the state budget. State law requires at least 30 percent of gross ticket sales go toward aid for public education and state programs. With the lottery missing its budget projection this year, that could mean less money than expected for those state programs. State officials and the Christie administration point to weak national sales of the two major multi-state lottery games, the Powerball, and the Mega Million. What a bunch of bullshit that is. Yeah. I mean, those things just uh, jump out of the machine. They jump. Oh, you mean uh, you mean sales? Yes, of course. Well, when they announce a, a, hu a huge astronomical jackpot, yeah, yeah, sure. And a phenomenon called jackpot fatigue in which it takes larger and larger jackpots for casual customers to play those games as uncontrollable factors for these latest missed budget targets. North Star, which signed a 15-year contract with the state two years ago, had projected income of 1.047 billion for the 2015 fiscal year, but revised that figure down twice. First to 955 million, then last month to 930 million. Those revisions are in addition to the group's cutting its income projections in 2014, known as a stub year. Since North Star did not run marketing and sales for the whole fiscal term from 760 million to 705.5 million dollars. The Department of Treasury declined to comment and to provide revenue figures for the lottery so far in 2015. The Lottery Commission said figures for the year will be out sometime in October. At the body's monthly meeting, there was a groan from the commissioner's table of, oh no, after Commissioner Al Alvarez asked Executive Director Carol Hedinger if the lottery was expected to meet its budget projections for the year. Are we expected to? No, I don't think we will. Although North Star has not yet met its income targets, it hasn't paid any penalties either. Because its contract with the state provides a $20 million cushion before it starts charging the group for missing its targets. North Star has about $5.89 million left after failing to reach its 2014 goal. Hedinger said May's sales of Powerball and Mega Millions improved 5% over the year before, from $253.5 million to $266.2 million, indicating, she said, that sales of those games were rebounding. 
North Star's failure to meet projections has bolstered criticism from Democratic lawmakers that privatizing the essential function of the state's fourth largest revenue source was a bad deal for New Jersey. Privatization ultimately never really works. In addition <laughs> to providing the state with $120 million up front, North Star, made up of two longtime lottery operators <coughs> and a municipal retirement, retirement system, committed to generating at least $1.42 billion of additional net income over the life of the contract. You can attribute shortfalls to jackpot fatigue or whatever else, but the fact is we brought these big companies in and they're being paid a lot of money, said Senator Loretta Weinberg, Democrat of Teaneck. We were doing financially at least a better job when we were running it. It's always the case. I trust uh, government and often big government a lot more than I would trust a private company or any CEO, any scumbag CEO or uh, corporation. Any any uh, any reading concerning the shooting in uh, no. South Carolina Church? Because it seems I like... I don't particularly deal with that stuff. Well, it seems like uh, extreme right-wing uh, uh, lunatics like Rick Santorum uh, are saying that it, it wasn't about race, it was about the religion of the church. They were attacking the religion. The the boy was, a, the man, young man was attacking the religion of the church. Different. He keeps on changing his mind. Yeah. You know, they have to take it away from the gun. Comprende? Do not blame the gun and start making laws on background checks and etc. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Because they're afraid of... They are Second Amendment asshole brown nosers. Yeah, well, they're, they're, afraid, they're afraid it's going to lead to more gun control. Of one sort or another. And then the NRA would start bitching and moaning. Well, that's what it's all about. That's, blah, what, blah, that's blah. the money they take from it. Well, the NRA. But it seems like, uh, man, it seems, it, well, the kid's face looked like he was on heavy duty. The kid was on drugs. Hey, let me finish. Well. He was on psychiatric, it looked like he was on psychiatric drugs. No? He was on recreational drugs? Well, then it was. Every one of these shooters, when you look at it, were involved with drugs. Let me tell you something. Don't make the mistake of of throwing marijuana in there with the with with the uh, with the drugs he was on because marijuana makes people docile, like Jesse Ventura says. Marijuana does not make people violent. Well, even even if you're doing the you're dealing with medical marijuana, you're usually hopefully not doing with smoking it. Smoking it makes okay. you docile. Smoking it makes I'm you mellow. I'm talking about the danger to the body. Smoking. You're just anti-marijuana. Marijuana anti doesn't make people dangerous and, and, and You're, aggressive. You are being, you are, you are, uh, you are, uh, you about the danger to the lungs of smoking. Let's just stick to, vi let's just stick to violent behavior. To this at this magnitude, whatever drugs he did, I'm almost positive, willing to bet it. It, 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 it wasn't marijuana. It wasn't marijuana. Yes, yes, we know that. This is clear right. to people. Okay. The point I made was simply, all the shooters from Newtown and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, you look in their background; they were drugs whether it was psychiatric, whether it was recreational. There were drugs involved. Okay, that's what, that's what they all had in common. It's just the same with these antidepressants that are causing people 
like uh, Mr. Uh, what was the funny man who just committed suicide? Uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. They they cause suicidal ideation, and the people go through with it. But will the psychiatrists take him off the market and not do them? They give them to you? No. Big Pharma is making a lot of money. Yeah. And they're probably getting their commission. Yeah. Like, so. like all drug uh, pushing doctors and of course. And people are dying. Of course the news is getting out that more and more medical doctors are misdiagnosing on purpose just to make money. Like cancer patients. Cancer treatment. The big fraud in Medicare and Medicaid is doctors and clinics. Misdiagnosing? No, or charging, cheating. Charging for things that were never done? Yeah. Procedures and treatments that were never done? Yeah. That's fraud. No kidding. Buddy boy. Every year, I believe it's about. 110 billion dollars fraud in Medicare. The healthcare So you system. take that, you take the subsidies to the, the to the corporations, which is about another 110 billion dollars. You've saved 220 billion dollars. And the insurance companies that the Republicans were so obsessed with p protecting, they're not so honest either. Well, of course not. And they got a 30 percent administration costs up front, whereas uh, Medicare has 2%. Right. And now we're not even talking about the big charities, which are scams. You know, to but shuffle the papers around, it costs you 30% in the private companies, and then Medicare only 2%. Oh, how much, on, are you, how much are you donating to the, uh, whatever, United Way, March of Dimes, uh, American Susan Red Coleman. Cross, oh, you're going to give us $1,000. That sounds good. Hey, we can build six houses in Haiti. Hey, hey, after we, we'll just shuffle some papers around, move some papers around the desk. Eh, let's say maybe 15 cents of your, uh, on the dollar, will go to the worthy cause. You only build six houses in Haiti. Where did all that money go? I don't know. Where does all those millions that... What about the Pentagon? They can't even account for over 2.7 trillion dollars. And what about the big time, uh, supposedly big shot Christian TV evangelists? Where, does, where do most of their donations go to? It certainly is not going to, to, to supply food a big house. To the pant food pantries for a the home. Car. They're not feeding the homeless. A plane. The is mansion. That is that is the, the, right, the car. Yeah, the, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plane. It's not. Yeah. It's not going to feed uh, starving kids in in the United States and Africa. So you know. So uh, hypocrisy. All right, we have time for one Instead more. Instead of spending thousands and thousands of tax dollars on trip costs <clears throat> and security. Why doesn't our part-time governor put that money to better use like putting it into the pension fund? Part-time governor, yeah. Not a part-time eater. <laughs> Hold on. Where's my levity bells that never rang yet this, this, this week? <laughs> I guess cats don't like jingle bells. He's wasting all that state money if he thinks of making a serious run for the White House. The governor places blame on individuals and groups, always making it look as if he's perfect. Oh yeah, sure. Perfectly rotund. Has Governor Christie looked in a mirror? <laughs> Being a retired teacher, I am very offended that the state pension fund has been so neglected since the Christie Whitman administration. Maybe the governor should stay home until his term is over and put that money into pension. He lost my vote 
too late now. You re-elected him. <laughs> and most likely the votes of every other teacher in the state. The day he took office. Why didn't the hell they think of that when he went up against Barbara Bono for his second term? Why, why, did, why didn't all these New Jerseyans think of this? And including the Democrats. I hope that teachers from around the country are watching what he has done to the pension system and to education in general in the state of New Jersey. Okay. All right, before we go bye-bye, you have a, um, a whimsical light reading, if you know what I mean. I have one, but here's a smaller GOP one. Ah, I, no, knock it off. I mean, spang it out. This letter is about Governor Christie. And how many Republicans are increasingly weighing in as they tell and show the American people all the programs they hold in an unfavorable light? Weighing in? I don't think Christie would have that. Would have a problem weighing in what he wants. Unions and teachers have been and are being decimated and demonized by the Republicans. GOP state legislatures have limited the number of women's clinics and are allowing religious public servants to deny same-sex couples access to necessary forms for marriage. What about that uh, guy, on uh, that pastor on uh, Facebook? Uh, he's going to put himself on fire! Oh, was it the one that said... For the marriage, 10, gay marriage. 10,000 pastors are going to kill yeah, themselves, you're gonna kill, well, whoopee, good, good for them. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Yeah. And what about that other nut? I don't know if he's in Tennessee, the one with the beard and the short haircut that says uh, that gays should be uh, 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 executed. <gasps> All of them. Yeah, he's like another... And he's, he's like, not a nut, right? He's like a modern... He's walking day, around, right? Modern day Inquisition. Yeah, uh, he's not in a nut house. No, he's a, he's an actual working pastor. Oh, God. Oh, I shouldn't say working. An active pastor. In an active devil's church, I suppose. Yeah, and he's yeah. popular, too. Yeah. Well... Well, he's on the internet all the time. Well, yeah, but all the devil's churches are popular. That's what it's all about. See, I could have wrote down his name... Well, you're dead and dead yet. But I didn't. I sh but you know what? I, I, I didn't do it because... It's too crazy. He, he, not only is he too crazy and, and, and the mainstream will will just brush him off as, as a lunatic, <laughs> but he... Um, but not his base. But the, the, the amazing part is he's, he, he's popular enough... Yeah. To, to be on the internet all the time with his comments, which means he's getting donations, which means he has a, his own following. Uh -huh. That's the amazing part. Oh, that's easy for the devil. That people... Very popular. People, they they really dig this idea uh -huh. of, uh, of uh, 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 genocide, of, you know, killing off people they don't like. Yeah, it's exactly. I guess I guess anybody that's not like them, they want to kill off. You know, that's like um, um, not that I hold this particular attitude, but uh, every one, in fact, every one of the relatives of those nine people shot in the, in the church. Right. They all forgave the jerk. They all forgave him. Are you serious? I am serious. Now that's hard to, uh, you know, especially take into your head. Especially shortly after their loved one or relative was killed, yeah. they instantly forgave him. Well, you know, he... It's a tough call. You know what he said? He sat there in the church for about an hour while they were holding Bible study before he brought out the gun and started pumping. He said he almost changed his mind because they were so nice to him. 
Gee, I wonder what, what, what ticked him off. He's because he was a white supremacist. But he, he saw... He had the Confederate flag on his uh, license. But he saw them so as, as being, they were nice to him. He said they were taking over the country. Now, as far as I know, blacks were like, or still are, <coughs> like what, one twentieth of the population? Oh yeah, they're taking over the country, all right. One twentieth? Yeah, something like that. I think there's more. There's more Hispanics. The percentage. There's probably of more homosexuals. What? More homosexuals. Homosexuals. Than blacks. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm saying I think the Hispanic population. Is, oh yeah, it's is, is yeah. close to a third, I think. Yeah. Well, there you go. You know, but. Um, They're, they're scapegoating. They're trying to take their misery, which is caused by the politicians they vote for. The conservatives are causing their misery. So they direct it against government? And, yeah. Or the blacks? Or those immigrants coming over the border? Immigrants of color. They don't oh, blame yeah. the immigrants coming from Europe because they're, they're white. But they blame, you know, people Brown of color. Ones. But it's like... They have a need to scapegoat. They have a need to to point the finger and blame someone. Yeah, because they ain't going to blame themselves. Because they don't have the sense, the common sense, to know who is really making their lives miserable. And that is the politicians that are spewing the hatred. The politicians that they keep on electing and re-electing are the ones that are causing their life to be the shits. Those moral right wing. And they don't have the sense to notice that. Okay. So the poor the poor slobs in Kentucky don't have this common sense to know that it's that Mitch McConnell, that ugly old turtle face that they keep on voting for. He's the one that's responsible for them living in poverty year after year after year after year after year. And it's not gay people, and it's not minorities of, not. of color, and it's not immigrants. What did Hitler do? Of color. Repeat the lie over and over and over. But what did he do? He went after certain peoples. He got rid of them. They still had Eventually, the same problem. Yeah. You know, they came for the gypsies. They came for the crippled. They came for the Jews. They came for you know, and it went on and on and on. Wouldn't it be e wouldn't it be easier just to kick them out of Germany? Than, than to kill them? It would have been because those trains were still running while they were losing the war. The trains taking them to Auschwitz and Bergenwald. That was a waste of money and economy and etc. But actually, they were still going. It was actually easier to kick them all out of the country. It, for them, for, for the Nazis, it would have been easier. Of course. But they were bloodthirsty. You see. Yeah, they. Just, and they wanted to get them scapegoats. Yeah, just like okay. the, um, the the crazy uh, 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 Confederates still fighting the Civil War down south. The tea bags. Well, this kid wanted to start a ra the, 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 who killed the the, the, kid, the people in the church. He wanted to start a race war. Because he's mistakenly blaming all his problems on someone. He wants yeah. to blame a group. Yeah. In this case, he, wa he, he, he wanted to blame people. blacks. Yeah. Are you done with that one reading or no? No! Continue. Republican legislatures have created the false idea that voter fraud is rampant and are reducing early voting hours. They are also going, giving, excuse me, huge tax breaks to corporations most of which have proved useless in creating jobs. I'm sure some issues have been omitted from my list, especially those concerning infrastructure, environmental actions, and social security. But suffice it to say, the health and well-being of the Constitution and the middle class are not high on the Republican agenda. What exactly are favored positions of Republicans? What and who are they for? 
it seems to me that it's the haves and the have mores. Yeah, the, the people that don't seem to have enough. That's what uh, Mr. George W. Bush said. Remember once he was at a fundraiser? And he says, people make fun, uh, saying, you, you know, the haves and the have-nots, but you, you are my haves and have-mores. <laughs> haves and have-mores. Yeah. And have even more than that, and then some. Well, you saw those things on uh, Facebook where that one percent and the one-tenth of one percent in the, re in the distribution oh. of income, baby, they own it all. Well, and they want more. Well, the greed never ends. It goes on and They're on. They're coming after our social security. They want to. They want to steal. Medicare. They want to steal our social security and Medicare. Oh, yes, because I, it's not an entitlement. I forgot to. I forgot to remind you. It's paid for. That before when we were discussing what exactly they want to do with the privatized camps, you must also remember that they want to do away with Social Security because they don't like the idea that the corporation has to pay its share of FICA. You pay half, they pay half. They, they don't they like that. It. They want to they wanna pay it, but they want to um, they expect you to uh, they expect you to uh, help them get richer by working for them for less money. Well, bingo. They're not. They're see. A person's job is not. It. it, it, it the average uh, mainstream American that works, if you still have a job, it, it, your job, your 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 the service you're providing your employer is not getting the respect it deserves. You're providing a service and you should be expected to receive ample uh, restitution, a a ample um, pay, okay, uh, for what you provide. But they make it like they're doing you a big favor and uh, they don't they don't want a minimum wage. They will expect you to be working for uh, one dollar an hour or mm. whatever. You know, maybe maybe desperate people in a third world country will end up doing that. What about desperate people in this country? Uh, people, Americans. Well, that's their only choice. America, are Americans are. <clears throat> They have the ability, uh, as opposed to these very impoverished third world countries, they have the ability to uh, get very militant when they're pissed off enough. Americans? Americans. What are you, nuts? Well, there are a lot, there's a lot of them out there. There's, there's militias out there, my friend. But those people are not for what you are for. Are you talking about the the normal, decent, progressive people? Yeah. And for, unfortunately, they don't get they militant. Don't get, that's correct. They, they don't, don't get uh, militant. They don't revolt. So you think these assholes, these idiots, are going to work for a dollar an hour if they had to? They do it in other countries. But that does, that's other countries. Yeah, but if we are made into a third world country, then we're going to do it too. You mean a, the the pure a pure oligarch? I've already got a pure oligarch. Well, the only difference is we're used to much more modern conveniences and technology than these other countries are. You know, we're not living in, in huts with dirt floors. Well, I'm sorry, but the right wing right, right now <clears throat> is uh, they're blasting out from their magazines and their uh, think tanks and etc all kinds of stuff against the American deadbeat. So yeah, we're, we're all born... 70% of Americans are now on the dole of one form oh, or another. Oh yeah, so if you're, 
If you're on the dole, not counting corp corporate welfare now, no, that's, no, that's no, a different no, no. subject. Or military. Right, you know, yeah. corporate welfare is in the billions every year, you know. Oh, they don't count that. We're talking about regular Joe Six Pack mainstream schlubs. If you're getting any amount of food stamps or any amount of assistance, public assistance, you're now considered a deadbeat. Yes. They, a deadbeat. There's a, the now, remember the old uh, welfare queen thingy? Yeah. Under Reagan? Well, now it's the Chisholms. The Chisholms, they are a. Uh, they are a uh, husband and wife or a family I remember that, the Shirley Chisholm that are already politician. rich and they're on food stamps. Remember Shirley Chisholm? How the hell do you do that? Yeah. How do you get on food stamps if you're rich? Yeah, don't, don't you have to disclose your like yeah. uh, bank your bank account information and and, right. and and your social security number and you get invested you get yeah. they check you out first? Yeah. Yeah, how do you and you have to tell them if you have any 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 personal assets, any stocks, any yeah. bonds, any real estate, anything of value? Yeah. Don't you have to show this all? So how does a rich person get food I don't stamps? know. That's what I'm asking. Is this another one of Reagan's welfare queens that did not exist? Or what, you know? You know, uh, a deadbeat, aside from poor, honest, poor people that just need some help, a deadbeat that, let's say, the father can't doesn't make his child support payments, or um, or he has to go per he has to go personally bankrupt. Can't pay his credit card, you know, or can't pay his car off. His car gets repossessed or whatever. You know, this dead B may not have any choice, and and may not have any options to be able to pay off these things. And he may just have to file bankruptcy, and you know, and his, say, "I can't do it." His option. But he's called the deadbeat. His option under the corporate fascist government is mm -hmm. to work for the dollar an hour. Period. Period. Yeah. Or, or. He or nothing, could, because no. there will be no social programs. They do not want them. Right. What about a nice juicy civil war? How you like them apples? Uh, it ain't gonna happen. You think so? You just said it. The good people are never going to do it. Well, they, I don't know about never, but they don't, they tend not to get militants. And let's go back to they the tend not let's to. Let's go back to the 30s when the vets came to Washington for their bonus. Mm -hmm. What happened? 1930s? Yeah, what happened? General McCarthy and Dwight D. Eisenhower kicked them the hell out and burned down their little villages. Well, the vets should get their bonus. But they didn't. Hey, vets today, in general, are paid uh, chump change and chicken feed for being a vet. Well, what do you call it when the goddamn contractor over in Iraq was making over $100,000 and the poor grunt on the front line was making what? I don't know, what, 30000 well, I don't know. 30000 if he's lucky, yeah. If he's lucky, Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know what the grunt was making. I mean, my friend uh, Nevada would know, uh, if I asked her, she would know, but uh, she's re she's a retired uh, career Yeah, well, whatever, but it ain't nothing compared to that. Veteran, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, so anyway, uh, well, look, passivism and liberalism aside, when people get pissed off enough, and there's enough of them. Watch out. Hey, Bernie Sanders didn't expect to get the crowds that he's getting. And it's only the beginning of the campaign, so you know. Yeah, hey, that's not don't underestimate the masses. That's of not revolution, that's reform. Hopefully. That's reform. You just Hopefully. don't believe in in I don't believe in, in American ki people. In, in killing evil. You wanna, you wanna have a little, throw a little compassion you can't in there. Kill evil with evil. You believe that 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 God's gonna give all these. God is not here yet. Wicked people a second chance. Here. Yes. I believe no. That there's their chance. It's not a matter of belief. It's what no, the Bible their says. Their chance. They had their chance on earth. What the Bible on says. On earth, they or had what their James chance. Madonna says. No, they had their chance on earth. 
No. That's what James Madonna said. The second I'm telling you what the Bible says. You, you're trying to tell me the Bible actually says. That's what it that says. That they will get another God chance. God says that this is not, he wants all. This is not this is not coming from extreme compassion and liberalism. This has to do with the Bible. I wouldn't have said it if it didn't. I do not put my opinions out there. All right. They're not mine. Well, this forgiveness and uh, but that's know, what God is all about. You know, like being being anti death penalty and uh, I mean I'm I'm progressive, but I'm not that progressive. Some people should be tortured. Hey, I've said some people should receive death by flesh eating beetles. A lot of a lot of Democrats and liberals would say, no, that, no, no, uh, life that, imprisonment, life imprisonment. No, don't do that. You can't do that. That <laughs> is James Madonna's opinion. I'm talking about an eye for you an eye. You asked me Rest, what the Bible says. I know. Says. Restitution. Yeah. Pay for the sin. You made the person suffer. You you committed a heinous crime. You must be sufficiently punished. In ancient Israel. Punishment. Yes. The family of the wronged person could go after the criminal. Oh, that's like a, or, pot, like a posse. Or. Well, that's good. The criminal could go to these safe cities that were set up. Safe cities. And no one could go after them. Why were there safe cities? Because God wanted it that way. Safe? Safe cities. But didn't God smite a lot of people during the Old Testament? Yes, he did. And a lot of innocent people were smited. Then why can't smite it? Because he didn't want them to. You know what? I can't figure it out. Exactly. I can't. See this guy up here? God rest his soul. Leonard Nimoy, Spock, it's illogical to me. It is not making sense to me. But anyway, it is... You do not it, have God's thoughts. That is why. You got... Your thoughts are not mine. You got evil people getting smited, collateral damage... Wait a minute, with, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who was smiting these evil people? I'm talking about... Uh -huh, in the Old uh -huh. Testament, when, when, when bad people were getting smited. I just told you the innocent people were also smited. What do you think I meant by collateral damage? Well, you just said the evil people. That is not what... The, what wait, wait, you, you're, try, were, you're trying to say that there were, there, were, there, were, there were parts of the Old Testament where God just decided to smite a hell of a lot of people and they didn't really, they weren't all that bad. That is correct. Well, what is the reason for that? Because we are all bad, starting out. We are all bad. So, so a Jeffrey Dahmer, or a, so a, a, a Ted Bundy, so a serial killer, is just as bad as Joe Sixpack walking down the street, going to get himself a six pack at the liquor store. That's what you're trying to say. Exactly. That is totally, preposterously exactly. illogical. Well, we all start out as sinners. What are you talking about? Well, that's we true. We are all sinners. Well, what about whatever happened we to... We all deserve what? What happened? The wages of sin is... Death. Death. What about fate? What, what about, about comeuppance? Come comeuppance. What about somebody... Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Not if I it, will judge. Not if it's a loved one of yours getting tortured and killed. Exactly, but that's, that's the stuff you in your character have to do away with. Why? It if, is character if, development which is God. If you're, That's what it's all if about. If you have a loved one which is held captive, tortured and murdered, you damn... You, you're, you're gonna want that person to be tortured and, 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 and die the same way. You, you're gonna want to get at that murderer. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good unto those who do bad to you. Turn the other cheek. Well, how how does how is the is the 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 the, the evil heinous wrong righted? How, it is not righted here. That's your point. You're missing the whole point. But the person was the poor innocent kid was you're trying was to take away. kidnapped. I had I had a big fight with an ex girlfriend of mine. That's how I broke up with her. This girl, this this innocent kid is walking home from high school, and she's abducted, and she's tortured, and she's raped, and she's murdered, 
and you're going to say that the relatives of this girl should just turn the other cheek and say, you know what? I'll, I'll leave it up to the Lord to handle Forgive. this. This, yes. You know what? On that note, you know what you're trying. Have wait, a great wait, weekend. Wait, 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 wait. Have a great weekend. You are trying to take. No, away. you are trying to get your own way. I'm telling you. I'm wait giving you my take. I'm giving you my take. Right, but I'm not giving you my take. I'm giving you the Bible's take. You're trying to say the Bible says if you if, if somebody are is tortured to take and away killed, God's job at the great white throne the judge what about a little baby being being a brute what about that girl it doesn't who, matter the what baby the was is. crying and she beat him to death it doesn't matter what you, that's all should, about she I'm should be just you, forgiven i'm telling you who is going to be the judge the baby and jury the baby didn't even live its life yet it doesn't matter you are doesn't doing, matter you are doing human stuff here i'm doesn't talking matter. about you are not the judge. If you judge, you condemn yourself. Because you will be All right, judged then we have, as you judge. Then we have a secular laws in this country. We have secular government. The, well, we don't have God's government. Well, the government that puts somebody in prison for life or, 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 or decides to give somebody old smoky, you know, whatever you want to call it, and, 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 or hangs them out west. You know what? Bravo to that. It's secular, but bravo. But not God's way. So. Well. You can do what you want. So people, people you suffer. You can do what you want. He's allowing humans to do whatever so, the hell they want. So, but he's not. That doesn't make so it right. So he's not, but you're trying to say he's not making a big fuss over an innocent young person being kidnapped no, and tortured. And the Again, he interrupts me. Because he has the power of life. It doesn't matter to they're, him. They're he being can, in taken the twinkling out. Of an, in the twinkling of an eye, he can give back life. What are you talking about? So, a kid dying prematurely in a bad way is not a, a really big deal to God, is what you're trying to say. He has the power of life. You, Eternal. You, you personally... Want to, don't want to go too doing, hard on, cri on, on, on violent criminals. You are trying to put human stuff upon God's stuff. It ain't working. The human stuff that you're talking does about Does the Bible judgment. say anything about karma? No, it does not. Well, then... This comes from... This, karma doesn't come from God or uh, religion. No. It comes from uh, reincarnation. See that's another thing, uh, Christ Christians. If you if you watch Ancient Aliens, uh, oh you understand that there are other cultures and beliefs in this world. But you see, the problem with Christianity is sometimes there is such immense ego with Christianity that they automatically dismiss any archaeological findings. They dismiss karma. They dismiss everything. You know, I think people get what well, goes around, comes around, and... Well, if that were you know, true, you wouldn't be standing in judgment then, or need to, would you? No, I'm saying there should be resti no, no, I restitution, know restitution for the... the but it ain't there. If you have a loved one who's kidnapped and tortured and raped and murdered, you want restitution. You want this guy... You want your hands but around this guy. you're not allowing guy. karma. You want to do it. That's part of karma. You want to wring the neck. That's part of karma. No, it ain't. Karma is something beyond you, which comes back in a cycle to punish the there's bad guy. No you way, want to do the no punishment. There's no way of telling how karma... You want to do the punishment. All right. No, uh, no, what's the word? No, uh, uh, um, no capital punishment. Forgive. Get psych, get psych, psychiatrists, and psychologists in the goddamn room. Uh, uh, feel sorry for the for the for the kid, for the poor little murderer. Give him therapy. Give him uh, send send a clergyman in here. Bless him. But you know what? All this. Listen, I am glad I'm I'm a moderate progressive. Take care, guys. Have a good week. Hi. Fine, but that's not what the Bible. Yeah. Okay. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.